بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈے وی دا موسٹ امپارٹنٹ ٹاپک آف دا کورس یٹ دا موسٹ بیسک ٹاپک ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ دی فالوئنگ سیکشنس فائن اینڈ دیٹ از واٹ یو آلریڈی سین بائی دی ہیڈنگ وی آلریڈی سین بائی ٹارٹ آف دا ویڈیو اٹس دا پی این جنکشن ڈائڈ سو لیٹ می گیو دی ہیڈنگ پی اینڈ junction diode all right so as the name suggests what do we have as the name suggests we have a p type material which we've already studied we have an n type material which we've already studied we combine the two we have a diode but the thing is that we will not be combining we'll have a same a single chip or a single material of a semiconductor and we'll dope one side with a pentavalent impurity and we'll make another side we'll dope another side of the same material with a trivalent impurity so we'll have a p and n type material on the p and n type doping on the same material so the, that material would then be referred as a as a p injection type it would not be like this that you have one material you you dope it with the p type you, you make it a p type you have another material you make it an n type you combine it together now you have a single material you make one side of it a p type you make one side of it an n type a junction will be formed a boundary will be formed of course in between the two types of materials one is p one is n the boundary between that is the junction the overall combination is a p n junction diode fine so uh, let's say if we if we want to revise some things up so this the first case that we'll be studying is uh, of under no bias condition okay uh, no external bias this would be the first case no external biasing what is this biasing this is the application of the external voltage the application of external voltage is called biasing application of external voltage which means we will not be applying any external voltage to the diode let's say if we want to revise the things up so you have a p type material so in a p type material what do we have you have a you have a you have a trivalent impurity right yes you have a trivalent impurity which means what which means that you have uh, you have uh, a hole is is is, is uh, you have an electron acceptor atom so what do you have you have a trivalent impurity so which means the holes are in majority holes is equal to majority and electron is equal to minority charge carriers and isn't it like this in the p type it is then what do you have for the n type material for the n type material you introduced a pentavalent impurity which means what that you gave an extra electron to the structure you have an electron except you have an electron donor atom parent atom so which means over here you have your electrons in majority and you have your holes in minority fine now now what do we have let's say we combine the two together let's say we combine the two together so first if i draw a p type material so let's say this is my my conductor and let's say this is one side of the silicon or the or the semiconductor base which i'm trying to dope So if I dope it with a p type which means if I have a trivalent impurity so I would have these negative ions these negative ions with what with holes these negative ions with holes isn't it like this it is 
and what will I have in minority? So in minority I will have electrons. So let's draw a few of them in, in number. Fine. So this is my p-type material. This is my p-type material. Now what do I have? I dope the other side of the same material with a trivalent, uh, with a pentavalent impurity. Or did I say it opposite? Now I dope this remaining side with a pentavalent impurity. So which means what? That I will have over here, I will have positive ions. I would have positive ions. With what? With the majority carriers as electrons. So I would have the majority carriers as electrons. And of course, minority charge carrier in this side would be the holes. So this is what this side has now become my N side. So of course to separate them, to separate them I have P side on one, I have N side on the other. So there should, there is, there will be a boundary in between the two and that boundary is this junction. That boundary is this junction. So I have a p-type, I have an n-type, I have a junction. This setup, this arrangement is called a p-n junction diode. This is a p-n junction diode. Is that fine till here? Now in the previous video, I told you that the overall lattice or the overall atom is, 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 is neutral. Why? Because we don't have any extra electron, we don't have any, any deficiency of electron. The overall thing is balanced. The overall neutrons is equal to the number of electrons. Sorry, protons is equal to electrons. So why these negative charges or what do they mean? So basically we've already understood it, but let's say if we have any confusion, so we remove it. This negative charge basically, negative ion basically with a hole indicates what? That this hole says that you have a vacancy of electron, right? We, we know a vacancy was created. We, ha we did not have one electron to get bounded, but, but the overall structure, the electrons and protons were same. So they were neutral. But we had a deficiency to complete the bond, right? So now if, 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 if this deficiency is fulfilled by an electron, we, we have an electron, so what will happen? The bond will be complete, but the, the thing would become a negatively charged ion. So this is what this negative charge in a hole means. Fine. Similarly, this positive charge with an ion, with a, with, a, with, a, with a negative sign means what? So the negative sign means what? That the pentavalent had five electrons and we needed four to make a bond. So which means what? That we had a relatively free electron, which was what? Which was this fifth electron. So right now this is not free. So therefore we made it with this positive thing. Why the positive sign? So if that relatively free electron is made out of the structure, why? Because we don't need it. We already have completed our bond. So if we, if we remove it from the structure, so we will have what? We'll have a negative sign and, and, and a positive ion would remain. So that's the meaning of it. Fine. Now I believe it's, it's much, much clear. Anyways, what would happen now? Now what would happen to this? So you already know that the Minority charge carriers are due to what? Due to the temperature, right? So the external application of external voltage would not have any effect on them, right? And therefore, no effect on the current due to them. Ion implantation is what? Is the process of combining the P and N type, which means doping one side with a P, other side with an N. What is it called? It's called ion implantation. Ion implantation. You write down the definition, please. The process of making one side a P, another side an N, of combining a P and N. But I told you what does the combination means. Okay. Now what will happen? Now what will happen? We have 
we will have a concentration gradient. We have the number of holes, the concentration of holes is greater on the P side, the number of holes on the N side is less. Similarly, the number of electrons on the P side is greater on the N side. The number of electrons on the N side is greater on the P side is less. So what would happen? Everything tends to move from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. So which means the holes would move from P to N and the electrons would move from N to P. Fine. So what would happen? What would happen? Just have a look. Just have a look what would happen. If let's say I draw it here. Let's say I draw it here. You have this already present. Let me draw them first. And you have this present over here. You, you have uh, your holes on this sign. You have electrons on this sign. What happens? Have a look. When you have, when you have what? When you have this negative ion with a hole, which means what? This, this is a vacancy of electron. So this needs what? This needs an electron to finish, to, 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 to complete this vacancy. So when electron would come from the N to P side, you have an electron with it, what would it generate? It would fulfill this vacancy. The vacancy would cancel out. We would have a negative ion remaining. Isn't it like this? It is. On the inside, you have a positive charged ion with a negative electron, right? So over here you have holes. Holes is what? It's a vacancy of electron. So when you introduce a hole with it, what would happen to this? The hole and the electron would cancel the effect of each other. Overall, you would have a positive ion. So which means that you've got what? You've got your negative ions uncovered on this side. And you've got your positive ions covered on, uncovered on this side. This was your previous, was your previous, this is the same junction that you have. And now something else have been created. The ions have been uncovered. So let me write it, the uncovering of immobile ions and another area have been created another region has been created this region is called the depletion region this region is called the depletion region why because it has been depleted out of free charge carriers and it has a width WD so this has a width WD. Now why is it called the depletion region? Because it has been depleted out of, depleted of free charge carriers. We don't have any positive ions. We don't have any hole. We don't have any, any, any holes. Neither do we have any electrons. Let me draw the minority charge carriers as well. Is this fine? So the current due to the majority charge carriers, the holes from P to N side, the electrons from N to P side, this is called the diffusion current. This is called the diffusion current, right? Uh, the movement of charge carriers from high to low concentration is called diffusion of course and the current is called diffusion current. So you write this down with yourself. Diffusion current is due to what? It's due to diffusion. And diffusion is what? For, carry, for uh, the movement from higher concentration to lower concentration. And this is happening due to the majority carriers. Isn't it fine? It is. Okay. Okay. So, a question. 
a question might have arised in your mind and what is that that is that if I have shown only one ion uncovered why not I show that this hole also moves and these ions also become uncovered why not these electrons also moved and this also become uncovered and eventually the overall structure becomes uncovered why why not why have I only shown only one ion on this side and one on that side to be uncovered and the reason I'm telling the reason is that now an electric field has been developed in the depletion region right electric field in the depletion region and what would that do what would that do the direction would be of course from the positive to negative side like this this is your electric field that has been developed and the direction you know is based on a positive test charge now what would happen what would happen so have a look if these electrons would try to move to the other side the electric field would oppose it why because this is the equivalent of a positive charge you can say similarly if these these holes sorry these holes and similarly if these electrons want to go to the p side this negative layer of charge would oppose it and hence therefore no further movement no further movement is possible fine yes so i believe that is it about the diode right so this is this potential is acting as a barrier to the further movement of holes and electrons this potential is acting as a barrier to the further movement of holes and electrons and so this is called the barrier potential or the built-in potential barrier potential or it is called the built-in potential and we'll see in the next cases that when the external applied voltage becomes greater than the barrier potential we have a flow of current right now we do not have any flow of current through it the only current we saw was the diffusion current we also have another current and that is called the drift current which means the electrons would move to the right and the holes would move to the left the electrons would move to the right and the holes would move to the left and this is due to the minority charge carriers and this is called as the drift current electrons to the right and holes to the left this is due to the what this is this is called the drift current and this is due to the minority carriers this is due to the minority carriers now under steady state under steady state which means under normalized conditions you don't have any external voltage applied what is the case the the drift current is equal to the is equal to the what the diffusion current so write it down please under steady state the drift current is equal to the diffusion current all right what else what else do we have net current is equal to zero for a p-n junction diode right you know this the barrier potential you have a vb so the formula is written in the book the proof is not important it's not included in the course neither is it in the scope of this course the barrier potential formula please write it down you have a k t by e k t by e natural log of n a n d d 
divided by ni squared. This is the formula for your barrier potential. And the terms I will tell you. So I believe the video is getting longer and it shouldn't be getting boring. It shouldn't be boring, right? But anyways, so the barrier potential. So what are these terms? So KT by E, this is, uh, this you could replace by another term, which is VT. This is KT by E, you can replace it with this. This is the thermal equivalent of, uh, of thermal voltage, or you could say the voltage equivalent of temperature. So please, you write it down. This is your thermal voltage, which means that this is the voltage equivalent of temperature. The terms I'm telling you, K is the Boltzmann's constant. K is the Boltzmann constant. And the value of this is equal to 1.38066 into 10 to the power negative 23 joules per Kelvin. Let's wait for the ozon to complete. Okay, the next. So, so we're done with this K, the T is the temperature of course, but in Kelvins, E is the charge of an electron. T is, let's say I would write K over here in Kelvins. Then you have E is the charge of an electron, which is represent, which is what 1.6 to the power negative 19 coulombs. Then you have an A is the acceptor ion concentration and D is the donor ion concentration. Let me write it. You have your acceptor concentration. And D is the donor concentration. And I is the intrinsic concentration or what, what is it properly called? Intrinsic carrier density. Ni is the intrinsic carrier density and you know these terms and you will be given them you have just to put them in the formula and yes that is it. So the Vt at room temperature so at 27 degrees is 0.026 volts. This you can directly take this Vt you can directly take and let me write it over here. So this Vt you can directly take at room temperature which has been taken as 27 degree centigrade. You can take it as 0.026 volts. Fine. And we also have a formula for the width of the depletion region. So I would also write that somewhere over here. Let's say I write it over here. So the width of the depletion region is given by WD is equal to WD it's equal to 2 epsilon upon Q and you have 1 over NA plus 1 over ND into the barrier potential and this whole thing under a square root. So this is the width of the depletion region where this epsilon is the permittivity and you know what a permittivity is and, and I have values for silica and germanium. So epsilon for silicon is what? It's 1.04 into 10 to the power negative 12 farads per centimeter and your epsilon for germanium it's 1.2448 into 10 to the power negative 12 farads per centimeter. The barrier potential for silicon is 0 0.7 and it's 0.3 for that and we'll see that in a greater detail. We'll see that in a greater detail when we see the volt ampere characteristics. I believe you've, you've got the main idea of the p-injection diode. P-injection diode was what? You had a P-type on one, you had a P-type on one side, N-type on the other side, a junction was formed. What happened? The uncovering of immobile lines, the majority carrier moves, the minority carrier moves. We have a drift current, we have a diffusion current, we have a barrier potential, we have a width of depletion region. That's it.
See you in the next lecture with the forward biasing. Till then, take care. Goodbye.